What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, July 11th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, 1.5 signs agreement to sell 500,000 metric tons of carbon credits to Microsoft. Ooh, spicy. Scam, scam. Next up, (laughs) lithium-ion batteries are a growing source of PFAS's Pollution, according to new study out of North Dakota and Texas Tech. Next up, Department of Interior shuts down millions of acres of Alaska to all oil, gas, and mining activity. Next up, Brian Zinchuk, a great opinion piece. Alberta's last coal plant shuts down, and days later, a grid alert appears. Oh, coincidence? I did not. And then finally, breaking news, Shell to grow LNG business with 2027 Manatee Natural Gas Production startup offshore in Trinidad and Tobago. Stool then tossed it over to me. I will quickly cover what's happening in the oil and gas markets and cover a pretty crazy EIA crude oil inventory storage update, which I think is part of the reason why we're seeing oil prices spike a little bit today. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there with Microsoft. 1.5 signs an agreement to sell 500,000 metric tons of carbon credits to Microsoft. Michael, I found this one interesting. I actually learned a little bit out of this article. The carbon caption capture company 1.5 announced Tuesday it has entered into an agreement with Microsoft to sell 500,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide CDR, which is removal. That's direct air capture for you uneducated people like me. The goal is to aid Microsoft's carbon removal strategy and become carbon negative by 2030. I see this as a scam. What does this really do? Do you know how much power it takes and electricity to do a direct air capture machine? Well, and, and Microsoft being one of the largest investors in OpenAI, which is running Chat GPT, which we've talked about at nauseum, the amount of power that AI is going to use, it seems like this is just a drop in the bucket from a carpet credit removal standpoint relative to what they're actually going to be burning, and let alone the water that Chat GPT is. Exactly. This is such a waste. An AT&T carbon removal agreement, they've also got it with AT&T so that AT&T can say, oh, we're removing carbon. But, you know, last I checked, CO2 is good for the plants. But Michael Avery, uh, Michael Avery, president and general manager of the 1.5, said AT&T's carbon removal credit purchase is another proof of the vital role of direct air capture play in providing a high integrity and durable solution to help organizations address their emissions. No, that doesn't address their emissions. That addresses their that makes them feel good. Yep. If it was gonna make it, if it was going to address how their emissions were done, that would be a different story. All this does is make them feel good. And this is 1.5 is Oxy's direct air capture, right? This is a, a Warren yeah, Buffett play. This is a Warren Buffett effort, yes. Interesting. It yeah. all comes, all I've been comes on, around. on that. And that's what Warren Buffett is doing quite well. Invest into Oxy. Get into this game. Oxy's leading the charge. Hats off to Oxy. They're going to take advantage of the money. I don't have a problem with them taking advantage of the money. I just think it's a waste of our money. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to uh, another environmentally friendly thing, lithium-ion batteries. <laughs> this story brings up my hot buttons. This got me worked up. Lithium-ion batteries, a growing source of PFAS pollution study finds. This is really pretty cool. I like it from the standpoint that poly furolycol PAFAS, which is the subnovel class of polyfuryl. I can't even say it, Michael. How would you say that? Polyfuryllycol. We'll have to get a caller in on the show on that. I'll take two. PFOAs is what the 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 common term is. The what? A PFOAs. Yes, thank you. I'll go with PFOAs for a hundred dollars, Michael. But hey, here's what it is really about. Our results reveal a dilemma associated with manufacturing, disposal, and recycling of clean energy infrastructure," said Golfo, an associate, a professor of environmental engineering at the Edward Whitaker College of Engineering. He is dead on right. I'm work starting to work with some folks with windmill removal and land reclamation stuff got going on. And this is a very important point. 
it, it is these results illustrate treatment approaches designs for PFOA and FOS can also remove the BIS study, the ASISs. It's Too many acronyms for Michael. me. All we know is that it's pretty clear that lithium ion batteries aren't necessarily clean. We've known that. Now we know that they're also a growing source of all of these terrible acids. Of course. And and we need them. And Michael, there's another story that went out on Newsbeat earlier. And California is in a dilemma because they have too much solar. And the only fix that they've got for this solar is more storage. So that goes right into this story is which came first, more solar or storage? You got to nice. go. You got to love it. Hopefully neither. But what's next here? Let's move to Alaska. <laughs> All right. This story is amazing. Department of Interior shuts down millions of acres of Alaska to oil and gas and mining activity. The decision on D1 lands removes the area the size of the state of Pennsylvania from source wow. development. And this was originally approved by Trump. Now, this happens after the Chevron deference Supreme Court, and we've had four cases, Michael, that have already been overturned by the overreach of the Biden administration. And the Biden administration rolls over and goes, we're not quite dead yet. We're going to make some people's lives miserable. This is nuts. This is a quote out of the article. Today's double whammy attack on Alaska's resource development opportunities makes 65 times the Biden administration has targeted our state's and energy and economic future. The administration is completely kotowed to radical environmental environmentalists in order to gain favor at the ballot box. 28 million acres off limits. This is just nuts. They're not well, going to what they've also free. did in, in a separate decision. They also blocked a 211 mile gravel road that would go ahead to connect West Central Alaska and the mining districts and extremely rich in copper. We need that. And if they want to do an energy transition, they need the mining. They need the copper. Yep. And I'll tell you what, our great oil and gas and our mining operations up in Alaska are better than anywhere else in the world. And they care about the environment. Why do you have the native Alaskans up there loving the oil and gas industry? Why do you have everybody lining up fighting for it? Because of the good regulatory actions that they have had in the state level up there. Mm -hmm. Hats off to the state. I love I love Alaska. No, we, we love Alaska. They they specifically are citing the fact that the jobs, revenue and minerals would want help Alaska continue to fund them, but also make us less energy dependent on other nations. So we it's got really a catch 22 here. Yeah, we got this big, ugly thing called China over here. We got to go through. So let's go to the next one before I get an aneurysm. All right, this one. This is from Brian Zunkchunk. Zinchunk, excuse me. Alberta's last coal plant shuts down, and days later, a grid alert is declared. Michael, you can't buy this kind of entertainment. On July 6th, the Pembena Institute published a paper by Chris Sven uh, Svensson Baker on July 6th. For the first time in more than 150 years, Alberta is out. Electricity is coal free. And on July 8th, the province went into yet another grid alert. <laughs> it's 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 dripping with irony. It is. OK, the grid does not care. The grid is not racist. The grid needs sustainable low cost energy coming into it. It needs fiscal responsibility. It does not care. Physics and fiscal responsibility matter to the grid. It doesn't care if it's coal or not. Yeah, the grid doesn't care about your physics. That's uh we need to put that on a bumper sticker <laughs> or a t-shirt. The grid doesn't care. But it also about goes your to physics. show how poorly wind and solar perform in non-normal weather. If it's going to be super hot or super cold, the wind and solar don't you got almost there's a sweet spot for this type of stuff. Especially in, in and it goes back to California. California, every, there is nobody buying any more solar to go on their roofs because the subsidies have dried up. The state subsidies have dried up and they've got more solar power that just burns away. And it's just now causing a lot of pollution because these things are burning up and not distributing their electricity anywhere. Yeah. So what do you do? 
you go to the next story. Exactly. Breaking news. Shell, Shell to grow LNG business with 2027 Manatee natural gas production startup off Trinidad and Tobago. This is really important. This is another trend. Michael, you've been talking about this for a while, and that is that Shell and BP and the other European big oil companies are going less renewable and going yep. more back to the basics. It's going to grow its LNG business by 20 to 30% compared to 2022 when LNG, LNG volumes were planned to grow by 20 to 25. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, they're taking advantage of what they see as a very lucrative future LNG market. I think obviously with the reversal of the decision for Biden to Biden administration for blocking LNG, they see possibly an advantage here. I mean, obviously this this is, uh, you know, this is I don't you know, see I don't see LNG as a bridge fuel. Everybody's saying, "Oh, natural gas and LNG are bridge fuels." I see them around a lot longer than a bridge. And, and and so I think this is brilliant on their part by expanding out their LNG portfolio. Speaking of that, if anybody is needing crude oil, jet fuel, or anything else, go to the energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk and uh, reach out to us. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure to get you in contact with, with that. I, I want to cover the oil and gas markets here, but before we do that, guys, we got to pay the bills around here. Thanks for checking us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com where all the, quote, news and analysis that you just heard is brought to you by that website. You and the team do a tremendous job making sure it stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. You can hit the description below for all the links to the timestamps, articles, jump back and forth, however you want to do that. I mean, as Stu mentioned, go to our website. You can sign up if you are interested in our trading desk, crude oil, LNG, you know, you know, jet fuel, any, any of all the, any of all of that. That's a tongue twister for you. Please check us out and, and, and we'll put you in contact with the right people there. But all right, let's move into it, Stu. I mean, pretty light, light one for me. I mean, we've got oil prices up a little bit. You know, they were actually up all the way above 8250, currently trading about 8209. SP 500 has seen a little bit of an increase despite what we're seeing behind my screen here in, in, in Fed Jerome, Fed Chair Jerome Powell talking about how there may or may not be rate cut, more rate cuts coming this year, which I think the market is somewhat expecting a little, you know, tempered expectations. Markets still continue to be on a rip from here. Two-year yield, two-year yields up about 0.04 percentage points. Ten-year yields down about a quarter of a percentage point. Um, we have Bitcoin continue to fall, fifty-seven thousand um, dollars currently at about you know three quarters of a percentage point off their daily highs. As I mentioned, crude oil still up on the day, over about a percentage point, but really down from its mid you know, mid highs where it was above 8250 currently again sitting 8211 as we record this here mid afternoon on the 10th. Natural gas down about three quarters of a percentage point. Brent oil down about a quarter of a percentage point, 8549. Natural gas, as I mentioned, three two dollars and thirty-two cents. We did see a you know a jump in refining activity last week. And we also did see if we can pull up the EIA highlight numbers here, Stu three 3.4 million barrel draw from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. That was back off an estimated wow. 1.8 or 1.9 million barrel draw that the EIA or the I the API estimated yesterday. So coming in about a 2 million barrel spread, which is obviously going to be bullish for prices. Really, all the other stuff is 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 you know what's going on specifically in um, down in Houston with a lot of these refiners. Hurricane Bevel has has basically how many people are still out of power down there in Houston, Stu? About 1. Million 1.2 million in the, in Texas still. That's just yeah, nuts. So we hope everybody's staying safe down there. You know, in the wake, we have we did see some refineries open back up along that Gulf Coast area, but they're you know the majority of that's going to open up here at the end of the week. Tim Schneider, he's over there at Matador Economics. His quote is: "We are seeing news stories out there that are still having little impact on the market, which means the market is discounting those." And he's referring to mainly the ceasefire discussions over both the war in Ukraine and in Gaza. So. Very interesting there. I mean, that's really all I saw today. Very excited to get our deal spotlight on Friday recorded with John Farrell over there at Well Database covering the Grayson Mill Devin swoop up. We're going to be doing a little prep call this afternoon to kind of go over what some of the highlights are. So if you if there's anything specifically on that you want to cover, guys, you go ahead and email us questions at energynewsbeat.com. 
dot com. But it's really all I've got, Stu. You know, we we got our. You know, you'll hear uh, tomorrow. You'll hear obviously our. What's what's going to run tomorrow? I'm not sure. I've got two or three that are stacked out there. We'll right. see which you'll one hear. they they come rolling through. You'll hear the weekly recap on Friday. We'll have we'll give you a Sunday off, and then we'll be back in the chair Monday. So we appreciate you guys hanging out and sticking with us all through this week. Um, yeah, for our Texas listeners, Center Point Energy has got 2.6 million customers. And they have 1.3 million without, so Centerpoint got hammered. They're the ones with, that's the provider without the electricity. They're the ones with the most. 1.6 is what's out of power right now in Texas. Yeah. Wow. Crazy guys. But the other one for you is the Saudis threatened the G7 over Russian assets. The G7 is trying to claim Russian assets and Saudi Arabia stood up and said, get your hands off of Russia's assets. That's going to be spicy. Nuts. We live in a crazy time, Michael. Yeah. Pretty Pretty crazy, pretty, pretty crazy. So, all right, guys, we're you sticking with us in all week. You'll hear the, the weekly recap on Saturday. For Stuart Hurley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you next week, folks.